Hey everyone, welcome to Pink Tutu Tarot. Today we're looking at what your hidden potential is. Where does your hidden potential lie? What opportunities are there for you out there using gifts, talents, skills that you have that either you don't know you have or you don't recognize you haven't fully utilized them. So I've got three groups for you. Group one, your card is the brown bear spirit. Hold it there for a second. Card number nine, if numbers mean anything to you and that helps you with your decision, brown bear spirit, number nine. Group two is card number 32, and it's the hawk spirit. Hawk spirit, number 32. And that's group two. And then group three is card number 65, the whale spirit. 65, the whale spirit. All right, y'all, all you have to do now is Pick which card, which animal, which number is calling to you, which group is calling to you. Go down to the description box, click on the timestamp for the reading you want to watch, and it'll take you straight there. If you find yourself in the wrong group, just accept it and move on to another one. <laughs> it happens, y'all. Don't worry. All right. We'll see you in there. Bye-bye. Hey, group one. So we're going to take a look today at what your hidden potential is. Where are there opportunities that maybe you're not seeing or realizing? So your initial card is Brown Bear Spirit. I'm going to leave that there for a minute while we pull some tarot cards. All right, your first card is the Five of Wands in reverse. The Empress reversed. And the Fool. Those first three cards represent um, potential and opportunity. The next three will represent uh, any obstacles or challenges to, to those areas that you might experience or might be experiencing. We have the Page of Wands. The Hanged Man in Reverse. And the Seven of Cups. Okay, give me just a second while I take these cards in and I'm going to listen for some initial messages to share with you. Before I do, I do like to mention that uh, if you're interested in a personal reading, one that's just about you and your situation, you can check my website at pinktututarot.com. There's also a link down below. You can see what availability I have there. Uh, otherwise, I hope this reading helps. I hope it resonates. I hope it brings you what you need to know. If it does, please give me a thumbs up or give the video a thumbs up. Uh, drop me a comment down below. I love to read your comments. Subscribe. Whatever you feel called to do, it just helps me know that our energies are resonating with each other. All right, so thanks for that. Now give me just a sec while I um, listen to Spirit and give you some initial messages. Okay, the first thing they're telling me is that your hidden skills you are slightly aware of, of this. You should be, or at least most of you will be slightly aware of um, what they're going to tell you, I guess. Uh, but what they're telling me is that you're not taking advantage of it. So let me get a little more information. Yep, 
we're talking about changing people's minds. You have a skill. Oh, okay. You have a skill for sort of getting under the skin of people in a good way or for being heard in a way that people listen, that they pay attention. And whatever they may think they know about a situation, about whatever it may be, a topic, you have this unique ability to help them see things differently. Not to say that their way is wrong and your way is right or vice versa, but you do, this is just a flat skill. Um, well, it, it made me take that back. It's not a flat skill at all. It's a very dynamic skill, but it's a skill that you have regardless of the topic. You have this unique ability of being able to share your thoughts on something or teach your um, beliefs, teach um, a way of doing things, whatever it may be for you, you have a way of helping people see things from a different perspective, for understanding things in a way that they never have understood them before, and for grasping ideas that have eluded them previously. It's a really special skill, and they're telling me you actually use this skill more often than you know, more often than you realize, because it's not always intentional. You're just being you. But what you're not doing is utilizing it to its highest potential. Um, they're telling me, you know, this is a skill you can use to, you could teach and make money from it. You could um, do seminars, sermons, um, even YouTube videos, that type of thing, where you are expressing ideas, sharing thoughts, giving people a perspective to consider. And it really works for you. And it will work for you if you, if you try to grasp that. Okay, so let's leave that there and we'll jump into the cards, but hopefully that resonates at least a little bit with you. All right, so your initial card here, your first tarot card is the five of wands in reverse. <laughs> They're saying that you, although you may not realize it, this is a very unique skill that you have. There is not a lot of competition out there for people who are able to not just teach, not just um, do like public speaking, give seminars. You have a unique ability that is rare, even amongst those people who do those things, to actually change people's minds. You know, especially when it comes to something that you strongly believe in. You can change people's minds in a way that they don't even expect you to. Um, you know, in some areas you may get people who are skeptical of what you have to say, who are in some way opposed to what you have to say. And there's something about your voice, about your um, genuineness, they're telling me, genuineness, the people listen to you, they take it in, and they actually believe you or start to believe you. Your challenge here in this particular area is the Page of Wands. Let me just hear what they... They're telling me that you, you often get so wrapped up and excited about your own stuff that you forget that there's other people who would benefit from learning from you. You know, you get excited doing your thing, whatever it is. Um, I feel a lot of you have a touch of a creative skill um, involved here, um, whether it be writing or I feel like some of you, it's music, it's uh, videos, you know, it's videography. 
that's not all of you, but I am getting that for some of you. Um, but you get, you get, um, you're tempted. <laughs> I'm letting them give you the words. You're tempted to take things off on your own and do them because you love it. Um, following certain paths because you enjoy it. You'll talk to friends and family members and uh, convince them because they're close to you. But you don't often use this as a professional skill or a skill that can help you get ahead in some way. Not, not um, on purpose. Okay. All right. All right, so from there we have the Empress reversed. This guy seems like he wants to say, hold on. They're telling me you are very grounded. You're not recreating the wheel here. You're not necessarily creating something brand new and trying to sell it. Uh, you're taking concepts that already exist you're making them your own, and then they re-emerge from you in a way that people haven't heard it that way before. So it's kind of an internal learning process that you go through, and then you you birth it, um, hence the empress, <laughs> this very pregnant empress, you birth it in a way that is uniquely yours. So, um, it's not that you're coming up with brand new ideas. Now, some of you may come up with brand new ideas. But more so, they're wanting you to look at ideas that already exist or concepts that exist, uh, ways of doing things, information, situations. You have to take that as it resonates for you and your, what you do, either as a hobby or what you do for a career, what you want to do. But um, they're wanting you to focus on what you know and what you believe and what you accept and recognize that the information you receive from others, you rarely believe anybody 100% when they tell you something. You know, when they give you a concept that is a little bit maybe faith-based, it doesn't have to be religion, but it could be spiritual-based or it could be something that is... Um, Not, not hard and fast, you know, could be a new way of looking at something. You'll believe, you know, some of what one person says, some of what another person says, a little bit of this over here, a little bit of that over there. You, you internalize it, you make it your own, and then you share it in a way that people around you accept it in ways that you don't accept from, from the, what the sources that you learn from because they don't make 100% sense. And you almost wonder sometimes if people believe 100% of what they're teaching because you, you don't believe 100% of what you hear. But you do make, it's like you make a collage of, of ideas and um, you know how to re-express them to other people in a way that makes sense and changes their mind. All right, so the challenge here for you with this is the hanged man in reverse. Just listen. Um, they're telling me there's a need here for you to spend more time talking with others. You, you Again, it, it, it's similar to the previous one in that you do this naturally. You do this in kind of in your everyday life for yourself. Uh, and, and possibly for the, the people who are immediately around you, you, you live this skill. But you don't actively promote it. And there is a serious potential there for you to Find a way to actively promote this skill. You know, find something that you're passionate about and begin to teach it to others. Begin to teach it to others. Okay. 
All right, so then we have the Fool card. Um, Spirit's telling me you're very open. You, you enjoy learning. You're open to new ideas. You, you're curious. You are adventurous, at least mentally adventurous. You want to know more about how things work. Now, this could be in a practical way. This could be in how the universe works. could be, be any number of things, but you like knowing how things work. You like figuring things out. You like finding things out. You like um, exploring things in a new way. And this helps you learn. This helps you believe in what you kind of incorporate into your life. And when you believe it the way you do, it helps you teach it to others. Or it helps you to promote it to others. It helps you to speak to others about it in ways that kind of stops them in their tracks and has them thinking differently. The challenge here for you is the Seven of Cups. You don't know where to begin. That's the truth. You don't know where to begin. You know, you have different areas of your life that you are interested in, different areas of your life that you feel you could um, capture the potential here. But it, it's a lot. There's a lot out there. And... Where do you take it? What do you do with it? Where do you start? That's your challenge. Where do you start? You know, so your opportunities here are actually as endless as your inspiration. The challenges are for you to figure out what <laughs> you want, where you want to start, and it could take you any number of ways, where you want to start and then to start, start doing it. Find a way to teach, do seminars, do videos, uh, do lectures, write a book. It could be any number of those things. Write an article or a blog about something that you feel is misunderstood out there in some way. And help people to see things differently. I'm getting from some of you that there's even the um, how people feel about um, trans or... Um, um, or, or um, homosexuality, um, uh, you know, there's, um, I, I don't want to get into tricky area here, but they're, they're just giving me, some of you have a unique perspective about, about this, about being a, a trans person, um, or being gay, or knowing someone who is, loving someone who is, and you have that ability to share that unique perspective. Um, also, for some of you, it's, it's about overcoming addiction, drug abuse, alcohol abuse. You have a unique way of being able to synthesize some concepts, some answers, some ideas and options, and being able to share that. That's just a couple of examples that they just dropped into me. So it will mean something to some of you, but not all of you. You all have to really just look into it for yourself and see where it um, resonates the most. So going back to your initial card here, brown bear spirit. I don't know what they want to say about this. Oh, they're giving me, you know, with this concept of the, of the bear and how they, um, I don't know a lot about animals, so forgive me if I say something that sounds stupid, but, but when it's time for them to hibernate, they, they eat enough, you know, to put on the weight to get them through hibernation. And what does this have to do with you? <laughs> They're saying, if you want to get started, think about an area that is interesting to you and sort of gorge yourself on information that's out there. Fill up on the information that's out there so that you can, like, in a way, it's like you go into hibernation as well and you can slowly wean out the bits that make no sense to you, that don't resonate with you, that don't mean anything purposeful to you. And then you're left with just the essentials. And the essentials are what will get you going. It's what will get you going. Um, they're also giving this very caring energy from the bear. 
the way a bear is very protective and caring of its cubs. Utilize that skill you have for generosity, caring, for protecting those who um, may be marginalized, or protecting those or helping those that need it in some way. Um, if you focus on that bit as a, begin, as a beginning step, on how you can help others with what you what you believe to be true, what you know, um, with the information you can share in your own unique way. It's a really good way for you to start. Um, but it can take you in so many directions down the road. There's so much potential here that it's not like you have to only choose, you know, one topic and then that's it. There's an endless number of topics out there, endless number of things that you could teach. Start with one, start with one. Learn as much as you can about what is out there in, under this topic. And internalize it. Internalize what makes sense to you, what doesn't. Um, be your own... Um, Weed your own garden, in a sense. You know, as you take all this on, pluck out the things that don't work and toss them. Get rid of them. And then you'll be in a position to, to share, to teach, to guide, to inform, um, to help others, really. There's a lot of potential here for you. All right, Group 1, I hope that helps. I hope it gives you some food for thought. <laughs> no pun intended, with the bear. Uh, thank you so much for being here, y'all, and have a great day. Bye. Hey, group two. So today we're looking at what your hidden potential is. Where are there opportunities that you're not fully grasping or utilizing? So your initial card is Hawk Spirit. Leave that there while we get some tarot cards down for you. And of course, we'll get into what that card means as well. First card is the Magician. The Three of Wands in Reverse. Judgment reversed. Okay, these first three cards represent your potential, what hidden potential you have. The next three are going to be challenges or obst obstacles to um, kind of balance out these, or um, you know, that could get in the way of these uh, potent this potential you have. Of strength in reverse. Nine of Wands. And the Page of Pentacles. Okay. All right. Give me just a second. I just want to take these cards in. I'm going to listen for some initial messages for you from Spirit. Before I do, I also want to mention if you would like a personal reading, a reading that's just about you and your situation, not a general reading like this, you can check my website and see what's available there. It's pink22tarot.com, and you'll find the, um, the link down in the description box as well. Otherwise, I hope this reading is helpful. I hope it gives you what you need. 
And if it does, please give it a thumbs up, drop me a comment, subscribe, whatever you feel called to do. I'm grateful for it. It helps me know that our energies are connecting and um, that these videos are valuable to you so that I can keep doing them. Thank you. All right. So just a sec while I listen to spirit and get some initial messages for you. Okay. All right, the first thing they're telling me is you have this um, brilliant ability to focus your attention down to a pinpoint. You can be incredibly focused when you want to be, when you're inspired to be. You also have very, very good attention to detail, and you can spot things that others miss. Now, to you, this may feel like, well, that's just you know, everyday stuff. That's not, this is why it's a hidden potential for you because it may feel very normal and everyday to you, but it is very valuable out in the world. It's very valuable and um, there's a lot of potential here. And hopefully Spirit will give you some, some thoughts on that as, as we get into it. So your initial card here, the hawk spirit, it does speak to that. You know, when a hawk is flying, they fly very, very high. And they can, they can set their sights on a mouse, for example, and track it until they're ready to dive down and, um, and grab it. You have this ability to see things from um, a much higher vantage point, see things from a higher perspective, be able to focus and pinpoint exactly what is needed, you know, what needs to be done, what um, where things are headed you have this innate ability it's almost instinctual to know you know whether in, in whatever industry you work in or you're, you're you're studying you know this ability to know should you go left should you go right should you zig should you zag um you have instincts that are um, very uncanny and then you have this attention to detail where you, you don't miss things that other people do miss and the hawk is very much like that. All right, so let's get into the cards and see what they can tell you in more detail here. So your initial card here is the magician. Let me just hear what they want to say about the magician. They're telling me you this skill of yours doesn't it doesn't just apply to one area of your life. You know, just like the magician has all four elements as his tools. You have the ability to use this whenever you want, wherever you want. And so, yes, it may apply to the job you have now. But if there's something you've always wanted to do, uh, something you've always wanted to accomplish, maybe a personal business or hobby that you've wanted to take on, utilizing this instinctual um, skill will help get you there. It's like you have an instinct for what the world needs in some way. You know, you can find that niche, that hole that other people miss. You know, this is what is missing out there um, in my industry, whatever it may be, or a product that you think the world needs or uh, a voice that the world needs. You have, uh, you have this ability to find that empty niche that needs to be filled uh, because you see things from a higher perspective. And because you have these instincts for knowing about timing, you know, when is the right time to do it? How is the right way, you know, to go about it? You have these instincts. They're telling me that you do use these, in, you know, um, skills. And you, you're probably even aware, at least as I'm saying it, you're, you're, you're aware this is something you do or you, um, you can acknowledge that in some way, but you don't use it to, for your own purposes so much. You'll use it maybe in your job and maybe not even realize you're doing it, especially when it comes to the instincts part. Sometimes you just know. You don't know how you know or why you know. You just know, like, this is what we need to do, or this is what our customers want, or this is the direction we should go. And nine times out of ten, you're right. You don't always have the data to back it up. 
um, which you may feel like hurts you. And in some industries it does because they want data to back things up. But if you were to utilize this in areas where instinct matters, you'll find that you have skills far and above what others have, regardless of whether you have data to back it up or not especially if you decide to work for yourself you know, because then you, you're trusting your, your own instincts in your own business now what's what's an obstacle or challenge you face in that area here we have the strength card in reverse um <laughs> the few times that you are wrong you absolutely destroy yourself you're telling me you really beat yourself up once in a blue moon your instincts are, are off Listen, even a hawk misses its prey sometimes. Nobody, nobody is 100% all the time, every single time. Cut yourself some slack. It's, uh, it's not easy to do. You know, we're all our own worst enemies. We are all more critical of ourselves than anyone else. But I would say most of us are. You definitely are this group. Um, but if you if you can step back and see your skill see your potential for what it is and how good it is listen we all have things we're good at and we all have things we're not as good at you're good at this it's okay to embrace it it's okay to acknowledge it don't beat yourself up when you get it wrong now and again when you miss make a misstep it happens to everybody it's going to happen to you it happens to you a lot less than it happens to most people. So be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself. All right. So then we have the three of wands in reverse. They're telling me you're always a little bit ahead of the curve. You, it's like you can anticipate what's coming before it arrives. And before others recognize it. So you would have a way, if you were in a competitive field of being ahead of the game, because while others are standing on the shoreline waiting for their ship to come in, waiting for an opportunity to show up, you can already sense it in some way, or you see it, or you know it. In some way, you know it's there. You know it's coming. You can anticipate it. And you're, you're able to jump on it and make something of it. And this sets you ahead of everybody. It makes you a leader. It makes you someone that other people end up following because they see you do it and you succeed and it works. And so they follow you and they do it. So yeah, there's going to be people who copy you, mimic you, um, follow you. Do your thing. Do your thing. You're still ahead. Because it's your instincts that are making it happen. Where others will follow, they'll look, they'll see you do something or someone else do something, and then they'll jump on board. That's not what you do. You, you can anticipate it before it ever happens. So your challenge here, when it comes to this, is the nine of wands. First of all, you're very protective of what you do, of your ideas. You uh, you again you don't like to get it wrong and sometimes you put a wall up or you don't speak up even though you know the right things particularly if you're working for a company and you're you know for example you're in a meeting and um, they're asking for ideas or people are talking about forecasting whatever it may be there is this feeling of i can't handle being wrong that rejection that feeling of shame that you feel sometimes when you get it wrong which is not very often listen i could tell you if you got it wrong more often you'd probably be more okay with it because you'd be more used to it it bothers you because it doesn't happen very much but you put this wall up sometimes where you don't speak up you don't put your ideas out there because you're afraid of being wrong there's this fear of of a failure uh, even though you're not a failure, you know, you're ahead of the pack. And if you spoke up more, 
you'd recognize that. Um, and other people would recognize it as well. And I'm sure you'll, if you think about it, there have been times when you've thought something and didn't say anything and then watched it come true, you know, in some way. You know, you forecasted a, a certain situation, a, a certain customer need, um, a sales uh, forecast, a trend, whatever it may be for you and what you do. You can anticipate it, but if you don't speak up, if you don't use that gift you have, it's not going to take you anywhere. It just stays inside of you. So try not to be so protective of it. Because it's a gift, really, that the, the world needs, you know? All right. So finally, we have judgment reversed. Let me just hear what they want to say about judgment reversed. Yeah, you don't wait. You don't wait. So um, how can I put this in a different way? There are times when things happen, and this is going to vary for every industry you're in. I wish I could give an example for every industry. But for example, if you're in the financial services industry and um, the market is dropping, Some people will wait, will watch and wait and look for that aha moment when they should buy or sell or whatever it may be. You don't need to watch what others are doing. You don't need to be told what to do. You don't need to be shown in, in any way what's next because you have these instincts that tell you this is next. And you know which way to go. It's really uncanny. It's a, and they're showing me again this hawk. And, it, and in my mind's eye, they're showing me this hawk following this mouse. And even though the mouse will duck under cover, it will go underneath bushes and leaves and trees where it can't always see the mouse. So it doesn't always know, you know, visually what direction it's taking. There's something in this hawk that knows anyway. And nine times out of 10, it's right on track with that mouse. You're the same way. You're the same way. You don't need anyone else to watch, to follow, to explain to you, to tell you, you know. The challenge here for you is standing on your own trusting yourself and not worrying about what other people think about you or say or worrying about rejection or failure you know if you notice this page of pentacles he's standing on one foot and i think i don't you probably can't see it but it's almost like it's a blade you know like a, a roller blade of some kind or ice skate standing on a blade so a, a tiny sliver he's balancing He's balancing himself on this tiny sliver of steel underneath his boot. He's perfectly balanced. He's not even looking forward. He's, he's looking, he's already looking at the next thing. You have to believe in yourself in that same way. Speak up. Share your intuition. Share your instincts. Share your ability to focus and, and find the the details, anticipate the trends, um, help others understand that some, <laughs> some situations are, are more instinctual than data-driven. I know companies want data before they make big changes. And you may not be able to convince anybody to make a change, depending on what you do. You may not be able to convince anybody if the data doesn't exist. But if you speak up, you stand on your own two feet and you speak up and say, this is what I believe. And you can give them your reasons why you believe it, or you can just state it. This is what I believe. Regardless of whether they listen to you or not, in time they will recognize that you're always right. Or you're almost always right. 
and you will become the person that they go to when they want to know what to do next. And you could easily use this for your own purposes as well. Um, in your own business, you know, whether it's anything from advertising to finances to uh, whatever it may be, whatever your skill, whatever your passion is, if maybe it's writing, maybe it's, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm coming short, whatever it may be that your passion is, you can use this skill for anticipating trends, anticipating customer needs and wants, for focusing and fine tuning the details. You can use this skill for yourself and there's endless opportunities there. You know, you don't have to wait for an employer to recognize and appreciate it. Start, you know, I'm not saying quit your job and go do something else, but if there's something you enjoy doing, start doing it. Sometimes the world needs to see before they'll believe. And they'll, if, if you show them what you can do, they'll eventually believe in you. They'll eventually believe in you. It starts with you believing in you. It has to start with you believing in you and being willing to put your voice out there and not beating yourself up. When, um, when once in a blue moon you do mess up, you do miss the mark. All right. Okay, group two. I hope that helps. Hope it gives you what you needed. Hope it gives you a little bit of food for thought. Thank you so much for being here. I do appreciate you and we'll see you next time here. Bye-bye. Hey, group three. So today we're taking a look at your hidden potential. Something that you're good at, a skill, a gift, a talent that maybe you're not utilizing to its fullest potential. So your initial card here is whale spirit. I'm going to leave that here for a sec while we get some tarot cards down. We'll come back to it in a minute. All right. Your first card is Justice in Reverse. Ah, cards going everywhere. <laughs> Just so you know, y'all, I don't usually um, take jumpers. I know some cards take only take jumpers um, or do take jumping cards, but I just have clumsy hands, so um, I let Spirit tell me when to stop. <laughs> Sometimes they'll tell me to pick up the card I dropped, but usually not. Okay. All right. Then we have the King of Cups. and the Knight of Cups. Okay. Now these first three cards represent your potential. The next, thing, next three cards will represent challenges to that potential or obstacles you may experience. Okay. We have Eight of Cups in reverse. <clears throat> A bit. The Empress. and the five of cups okay give me just a sec i just want to take these cards in and i'm going to listen for some initial messages for you from spirit uh, and then we'll get into what is going on here before i do i'd like to mention that if you would like a personal reading when it's just about you and your situation rather than a general reading like this you can check my website and see what's available there it's pink tutu tarot.com and you'll find a link down below in the description box 
Otherwise, I hope this reading is helpful. It gives you the insight and guidance you need and that you're looking for. If it does, please give it a thumbs up. Drop me a comment down below. Subscribe, whatever you feel called to do. It really helps me. It helps the channel. And it helps me know that our energies are connecting, which will help future readings as well. All right. So thanks for that. Now I'm going to listen to Spirit and get some um, initial messages for you. Come on, sec, y'all. Okay, the first thing they're telling me is that, and you, you will probably recognize this on some level, but you have an, an emotional depth to you. In other words, you're not someone who skims the surface very often, you know. If you meet someone or you're talking with someone, rarely do you want to talk about the weather or what they did over the weekend. I'm sure you maybe do that as well, but your conversations with you more often tend to start to delve into bigger topics, deeper ideas. Um, people will tell you things that uh, they wouldn't normally tell a stranger or, or talk about in general. There, there's something about you that people feel magnetically drawn to in a way where they can sort of unload <laughs> their deepest secrets, their, um, their fears, their tragedies, their sorrows, the, you know, whatever their deepest, darkest emotions, or wherever they stem, people tend to tell you about it. And you are able to handle and manage those emotional depths very well. You don't get scared off by them. You don't get skittish about them. Uh, you're not somebody who judges people for the things they tell you. But you're also very good at balancing communication. In other words, talking to them and listening. Um, they're giving me, you, you would make a great advisor, a uh, great therapist, great coach, um, a great a minister of some kind, you know, uh, if you have religious leanings in some way, um, spiritual coach. There's a healing quality to your communication. And it starts because you have this deep understanding and acceptance of the depth and the darkness that can and does happen in people's lives. Probably because you've experienced it yourself in some way. All right, so your initial card here, the whale spirit, it really does speak to this emotional depth. Uh, you have the ability to go deeper than most people, and people recognize that in you. They recognize it in you, which is why they find themselves weirdly feeling very weirdly comfortable um, talking to you about things that. They may not even tell their own family. Uh, but, and you may be a stranger sitting on a bar stool or something, and, and they, they share their whole life story with you. Um, and I'm, I haven't been reading the bottom line here on these cards, but this one says, trust the great mystery. And they're, t they're highlighting the word mystery. There's something mysterious about you and about this ability you have. Um, people can't explain why they feel so comfortable talking to you. You may not be able to explain why you just you just know what happens a lot and that you're not uncomfortable with it okay so hopefully that resonates and makes sense too so looking at your first tarot card you have justice in reverse you're not somebody who judges others you may hear of um, things that people have done or experienced that others would be critical of and instead, you actually find a way to understand why they did this or that, or um, why something unfolded the way it did. You have this ability to look past initial impressions and see the truth of a situation rather than judge it based on 
hearsay or based on, again, initial impressions or based on what it looks like on the surface. You know, someone may tell you they, you know, at one point they committed a crime. And you would have this ability of wanting to understand what happened. Why? How do they feel about it now? How have things changed since then? Rather than judge them and, and make this impression for, of them based on that bit of information, you're able to take it in and acknowledge it in a way that a lot of people don't. And it's one of the reasons why people are drawn to you. They may not know this about you, you know, on a conscious level, but there's something about you that draws them in. Now, the challenge here with that is the Eight of Cups in reverse. You sometimes have a difficulty walking away from other people's problems, their situations, their tragedies. You carry them around with you. And sometimes you feel like you're responsible or you feel a sense of responsibility for them. You, you want to fix situations for them. You want to make things better. You're a very caring person. And you want to do something to help. When somebody bears their soul with you, you want to do something to help them. What you don't realize is that you already have. By listening, by not judging, and by, the, by your words, you have a way of speaking to people when this happens where they feel heard, they feel listened to, and they feel cared for. So you don't have to carry these burdens around with you. You have your own. You don't have to do that. Um, and if, you know, if you're not a therapist, for example, but you've been, you've been drawn to that field, maybe you're thinking about it and you thought, oh, I don't know if I could hear people's problems all day. Um, I would be a mess by the time I got home. You know, I would just be carrying it all around with me. You do have a tendency to do that. You would have to consciously um, kind of cleanse yourself of that and detach from other people's problems so that you can be the best therapist you can be without burdening your own, your own self, just as an example. Okay. All right. So then you have the King of Cups. And they're telling me you're very rarely rattled. There's not much that shakes you up. You whether you think of yourself as spiritual or not, there is a spiritual aspect to you. This depth that you have is mystical. You know, there is something mystical about it. There is something spiritual about it. It comes from your higher self that has a much deeper understanding and a much, much closer connection to you than a lot of people have. We all have a higher self, right? Um, a part of ourselves that sees the big picture, understands the great mystery of our lives, and um, is with us. You know, it's part of us, but a higher part of us. You have a very, very close connection with your higher self. So you, you understand more. You can accept more. You can um, experience things without questioning them quite so much. And whether you realize that or not, they, that is what I'm getting here. Um, it's like a direct connection to the spirit world in some way. Um, so you're able to take in the tragedies of life. I'm getting for some of you, you know, working in um, forensics um, as, uh, you know, somebody who investigates or um, looks into, you know, murders and those kind of things. Um, you know, it's not a topic most people want to talk about, but you're able to, it's a detachment from, I don't think detachment's the right word. What's the right word, y'all? Yeah. Oh, that's weird. Right? They actually said it's a closeness, a closeness, which is the exact opposite of detachment. It's a close, you have a closeness um, to these type of things for some reason, where you understand it. And you're not rattled by it, or at least not as much as other people. Um, you're very emotionally adept. You can handle what people 
tell you. You can handle what people show you, what people give you. Um, no matter how deep it is, no matter how difficult it is, you have a very, very deep capacity for that, for this emotional stability and this really this connection that um, helps you to continue to understand the bigger picture of life so that you don't get bogged down in the tragedy of it all. All right, so the challenge here with this is the Empress. Let me just hear what they want to say about the Empress. Hold on one second. Okay. They're giving me, um, for some of you, you, while you can handle emotional depth, you find it sometimes difficult to, um, to, to rebirth yourself from that, to, uh, step into the sunshine <laughs> and uh like it's almost like you live in the depth sometimes you know you're so used to the deep waters um that you forget what it's like to just be on a sandy beach you know you know the the empress is is new beginnings it's love it's light it's abundance it's happiness Sometimes you actually have to make an effort to lighten up because you, it's almost like you're walking around with the mysteries of the world inside of you. And there's a sense here of being so very capable of carrying these things around with you that you forget to be light and buoyant and, um, and, and full of sunshine. They're just showing you sunshine and happiness. So, you know, it's just something for you to work on. You know, it's the same with the previous one, you know, being able to help people with their burdens, listen to them, but don't carry them around with you. Be able to go down deep like the whale does, go down deep but also to rise back up and come to the surface, you know, experience the sun on your back and the sun on your face, um, splash in the water, play, have fun. This is what will help you balance your own life so that you don't become so heavily encapsulated in this darkness or deepness, not really dark, it's a deepness. Okay. All right. So then we have the Knight of Cups. Let me just listen for a sec. Okay, they're telling me um, you also have this gift for wanting to help others. You want others to be happy. So when somebody comes to you with their problems, for example, with their difficulties, with their tragedies. You listen, you're a very good listener. You make sure they know they're heard, whether it's consciously or not, you do. They know you're listening, they know you're um, not judging them. They know you can handle it. Your words are very healing to them, but there's a part of you that's also very good at helping other people walk away feeling better than they did coming in. You have a gift for easing people's burdens, helping them feel happy, helping them experience the joy of life again in some way. You really have a way of healing people. Even if you don't realize it. Again, I feel like some of you, you just do this on a, you know, on a casual basis, literally sitting on a bar stool, talking to strangers and or on a park bench and they just unload, you know, they're, they're suffering on you and you're able to handle that and lift them up and heal them in a sense, you know, and they walk away feeling lighter and happier than they, than they ha had before. So what's the challenge with this? It's the five of cups. You often wonder, 
about what happened with these people. Again, instead of just letting it go, you know, I, I do feel like sometimes it's strangers who come to you. And it's beautiful because they're attracted to your light. They're attracted to your consciousness in some way. But you often, you, you often um, almost reminisce about their problems and think about them again later, even years later. You wonder what happened to them. You wonder if they're okay. You think about them. Not that this is a bad thing, but over time, this can weigh you down. So Spirit's just encouraging you really to be conscious about this. Remember, it's, it's wonderful to go deep, but then you got to shake those barnacles off. Come up to the surface, right? And enjoy the sunshine as well. You're not meant to stay in the deep all the time. Your depth is a gift, so don't let it turn into kind of a curse for you. Um, but there's a lot of potential here for you. There's, there are jobs, there are um, even hobbies you could do. You could even use this in your own, um, wherever you work now, you can find ways if you're conscious of it. Um, I know it doesn't fit for every industry and every career, but for teachers, for example, um, you would have this unique ability of finding the student who is struggling maybe struggling at home, suffering at home in some way, and help ease their burden, that type of thing. But you have a lot of potential here, and whether you use it for your career, or you just use it to bring some healing to the world, you know, Spirit is just encouraging you to acknowledge this gift that you have, this talent that you have, and um, to use it to the best of your ability. To not be burdened by it, but to use it. Whether you do it for, for money or you just, you just do it, you're encouraging me to be conscious about it, to be aware of it, so that, number one, you don't get burdened by it, um, but also because it's a gift that um, when it's shared, it multiplies. All right, Group 3, I hope that helps. I hope it resonates and gave you a little bit of food for thought. Thank you so much for being here, y'all, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.